Central Educational and Popular Science Film Studios, Moscow. This film is dedicated to the memory of the great founder of scientific communism, Karl Marx. January 1934, Leningrad. On the speaker's stand is the leader of the Leningrad Communists, secretary of the Central Committee of the Party, Sergei Kirov. Marxism-Leninism, it is to this teaching that we owe everything. Do not think that we are building socialism successfully just because we are daring and persistent. The laws of history cannot be toppled by persistence alone. It can only be done with the help of a scientific theory. Not only Marx, Engels and Lenin dreamed of happiness for the people. Long before them, there were other men, the best minds of their time, who sacrificed themselves in order to liberate the oppressed from the yoke of exploitation. But they failed in what they tried to do. History knows of times when whole strata of society attempted to overthrow the existing system. Their attempts were hopeless. They did not have in their hands the weapon that is Marx's teaching, a teaching that explains how society develops. Portrait of a Great Man Scenario, Alexander Kosachev. Direction, Alexander Kosachev and Arkadzi Tsineman. Camera, Lev Zilberg and Gleb Chumakov. Music, Vitaly Gevixman. Material from the State Film Archives, the Central Party Archives of the Institute of Marxism-Leninism and the Marx and Engels Museum are used in this film. You hear that? That is time passing. Time which is measured in hours, centuries, epochs. Marx and time. How did this man's life affect the fate of mankind? See how the contours of states have changed during the past century and a half. Plotted on this map are the changes in borders, however slight, that occurred over the last 150 years. The changes brought about by wars, colonial wars, uprisings and revolutions, changed the maps of South and North America, Asia, Africa and Europe. Empires and kingdoms arise and crumble, republics are born. What can a map tell us? The lights go on, showing the contours of the socialist states. This is the most significant change in the history of the planet graphically recorded. A communist form of society is being built in many parts of the world.
Marx and history. It is not possible within the short span of a film to show even in part the full significance and scope of the phenomenon called Marxism. Let us try instead to visualize Marx the man, to picture for ourselves how he lived and worked, to understand the importance of his heritage. This is the Institute of Marxism-Leninism of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. The Institute was founded on the initiative of Vladimir Lenin. Today, this is the largest center for the study of the history, theory, and practice of Marxism-Leninism. The Institute is known far beyond the borders of the Soviet Union. The hundreds of people working here have made their contribution to the study and propagation of the works of Marx. It took many years of the most scrupulous work in order to search out and put together the papers and letters of Marx and Engels to decipher, translate, and make a detailed study of them, thus making this priceless heritage available to millions. Marx's manuscripts, and especially his letters, can only be read with a knowledge of several languages. Marx wrote in English, German, French, Spanish, Greek, Latin, Italian, and Russian. This is a list drawn up by Marx of the Russian books in his library. Marx's handwriting is often difficult to decipher. There are any number of corrections, notes, and abbreviated words and sentences on every page. Here is someone who was able to decipher some of the most complicated pages of Marx's manuscripts. Senior research worker of the Institute of Marxism-Leninism, Nina Nepomnyshchaya. Why do you find it necessary to decipher all that had been crossed out in Marx's manuscripts? Every word written by Marx is important for us. By deciphering what he crossed out, we can understand him better for his whole process of thought is thus made clear to us. When deciphering a manuscript of his, I sometimes feel that I am, as it were, participating in his work. Evgenia Stepanova, Doctor of Historical Sciences. We have published the second edition of the works of Marx and Engels, the most comprehensive to date. These works are of vital importance for the international workers and communist movement. Irina Bach, Doctor of Historical Sciences. Marx's notebooks often supply us with clues as to where some of his lost articles can be found. These are photographic copies of his notebook for 1857. It is stated here that on February 20th an article of his was sent to the New York Tribune. The correspondence between Marx and Engels is also of great help in such matters. 
For 20 years, Marx and Engels resided in different towns. Marx lived in London and Engels in Manchester. At certain periods, they exchanged letters almost daily, mentioning the articles they were working on. And how do you determine the date of this or that paper at times when Marx and Engels met and correspondence ceased? Well, these for us are always extremely difficult periods. Eventful for them, but difficult for you. Yes, although it is a historical and biographical paradox. For us, these periods are white spots. What can you say about Marx's personality? He had inherent charm, but far more important than that. He was armed with a scientific method and understood that in order to communicate with people, one had to be attentive to the needs of each. The Marx and Engels Museum in Moscow. How can the lives of two geniuses, whose fate was closely linked with so many events of great moment in the history of the world, be fitted in to these halls and rooms? Are not the events of the revolution and the struggle of millions of communists for the victory of Marx's ideas too stupendous, too monumental to be confined in the museum? How can the importance of the revolution he brought about in philosophy, political economy, and other social sciences be shown to people? There is no museum in the world where the immensity of what Marx and Engels accomplished could be shown in the way it really deserves. Capital, a great book. The writing of this book alone would make any name immortal. This book lays bare the closely kept secret of bourgeois society, surplus value, which in plain words amounts to robbery, the robbery of the working class. Marx gave 40 years of his life to the study of the origin and development of the capitalist system of production and proved scientifically that it was doomed to perish. Marx and Engels wrote many books, articles and letters. Among these, Das Kapital stands out as the summit of scientific analysis of the process of the development of society. The British Museum, the Reading Hall. During the many years of his life in London, Marx came here practically every day to work on his manuscripts. In 1851, he wrote to his friends, from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., I am usually in the British Museum. The material I am working on is devilishly voluminous. And in 1858 he wrote, I am not the master but the slave of my own time. I have only the night for myself. Finally, when the first volume was completed, Marx wrote to Engels, It is two o'clock in the morning of August 16th, 1867. Dear Fred, I have just completed proofreading the last signature of the book. This has only been possible thanks to you. Without the sacrifices you made for my sake, I could never have completed the tremendous work involved. I embrace you filled with gratitude. All the best, my dear true friend, yours, Karl Marx.
The whole passage of history shows that the conclusions arrived at in Das Kapital hold true to this day. These are scenes filmed during the currency crisis in England in 1968. By far not the first and not the last crisis demonstrating the instability of the capitalist system. And these are shots of the 1929 crisis. The similarity is astonishing, although the modern process is a great deal more complicated. What remains constant and unchanged is the destruction of huge quantities of food. But perhaps what we see taking place at the end of the 20s has long become outdated, not at all. Here is a photograph taken many years later. This is happening today when millions of people are dying of hunger a society of savage and irreconcilable contradictions. Silence. For thousands of hours, industrial giants stand idle, hit by strikes. These are scenes in various parts of the world. Flashes from different decades collide on the screen. The struggle is just as intense and furious today as it was yesterday. There are many reasons for the clashes which are born of many contradictions. Bourgeois society, prosperous and flourishing, the bulwark of what is called the free world. Here is its true face. witnesses a changing world. Thousands of years of the development of all the sciences have given man great power over the forces of nature. But it is only in that part of the world where capitalism has been rooted out and where the people have mastered Marxism that science and industry serve to benefit all. Hundreds of articles, scores of books, thousands of letters were written by Karl Marx. 
But let us go back to the day Marx was born. the old German town of Trier. Marx was born here on May 5th, 1818. Today, Trier's population numbers 90,000, almost 10 times more than on the day when Heinrich Marx became father of a boy whom he called Karl. One hundred fifty years ago, Karl Marx's father practiced law on the first floor of this house and his family lived upstairs. Karl spent his childhood here. What was Trier like in 1818? This print gives us an idea. And here is an entry in the registry book. On the seventh day of the month of May of the year 1818, I was visited by Herr Heinrich Marx, aged 37, lawyer and functionary of the Trier Municipal Council, who had with him a baby boy. The parents wish to give the boy the name of Carl. Marx lived in remains unchanged to this day. What events took place in the world at that time? Let us take a look at some of the European papers. The Abbe de Croix went to the island of St. Helena because Napoleon Bonaparte had asked for a father confessor to visit him. The ships Isabella and Alexander sailed for the North Pole in search of ways to the Davis and Bering Straits. A number of insurgents in South America put themselves under Bolivar's command. In Washington, it was decided to drive the Indians all the way to Florida. In Moscow, in the Chudov Monastery, Alexander, who was to become heir to the Russian throne, was christened. The press of that day yields no evidence testifying to the birth of the working class. Yet it had not been so long ago that the English bourgeoisie had been shaken by the Luddite movement. This spontaneous and ominous uprising was the forerunner of coming proletarian battles. The movement was brutally crushed by the English bourgeoisie. These drawings are by Doré, the working districts of London. The fate of these people, exhausted by labor and extreme poverty, was the object of compassion of the humanists of those years. 
Marx alone saw in them the traits of a class to whom the future belonged. The law of society's development discovered by Marx was an astounding paradox. The more powerful do the productive forces of capitalism become, the closer is its collapse. Because every step in its development increases the ranks of the proletariat, the bourgeoisie is hourly building up the very force that will cause its final downfall. By constantly expanding production, which in the process acquires a public character, capitalism destroys its own foundation, private enterprise. Marx and Engels wrote that bourgeois society resembled a magician who has lost control of the forces he himself unleashed. Let the ruling classes tremble at a communist revolution the proletarians have nothing to lose but their chains. They have a whole world to gain. Workers of the world unite. That is what Marx and Engels wrote in the Manifesto of the Communist Party, the first document of scientific communism. Marx's associates, members of the Union of Communists, Friedrich Lessner, Konrad Schramm, Roland Daniels, Joseph Voidemeyer, Hermann Bürgers, Georg Wert, Georg Julian Garni, Wilhelm Wolf, Friedrich Engels. February 1848, the first copies of the manifesto had not yet come off the press when Europe was shaken by a revolutionary hurricane proving the correctness of the conclusions at which Marx had arrived. Corrupt regimes were collapsing in Paris, Prague, Vienna, Budapest, Berlin and Rome. Marx had been perfectly justified in calling revolutions the locomotives of history. in the spring of 1848. France's revolutionary capital was celebrating the victory of freedom and honoring those who had died for the revolution. The words liberty, equality, and fraternity were to be heard everywhere, but the people were deluded. All the gains of the revolution had been taken over by the bourgeoisie. At this time, Marx and Engels started publishing the Neue Rheinische Zeitung in Germany. Later, Lenin called this paper the best unsurpassed organ of the revolutionary proletariat. Engels wrote, this was a revolutionary time, and to work in the daily press at such a time was exhilarating. With one's own eyes, one could see the potency of every word. On June 23, 1848, Marx's paper, published far from France, was able to discern in the events of the day a fight for the liquidation of the bourgeois system. The troops fired point-blank at the workers who were demanding work and bread. General Kavignac earned the name of Strangler of the June Revolution. The jubilant bourgeois press poured slander at the workers. It was only the Neurheinische Zeitung that took a firm stand in defense of the Paris insurgents.
What made these men face death? Many of them, till very recently, never had a thought of taking up arms. How easy it seemed to agree with the fantastic plans of the utopians to build, without firing a single shot, a happy and just society based on the general and voluntary harmony of the classes. The Great Utopians. Charles Fourier, a man of tragic fate, talented and passionate. Henri Saint-Simon, he died in poverty without realizing his projects. Robert Owen, a contemporary of Marx's, a humanist who saw the society of the future as one where every man is entitled to a harmonious education from earliest childhood. Moore, forefather of the Utopians. He was centuries ahead of his time. Tommaso Campanella, who dreamed of a radiant city of the future. Utopia and reality. Liberty, equality, and fraternity. The ruins of the workers' suburbs became an ominous monument to the illusions of the utopians that a peaceful fusion of the classes was possible. The revolution is dead. Long live the revolution. Marx made use of all the best that was created by his forerunners, representatives of English political economy, German classical philosophy, and French socialism. Friedrich Hegel. Marx advanced the teachings of this great German philosopher on dialectics. Hegel's theory of contradictions as the moving forces in the development of the spirit was stripped of all its mystical trappings and acquired flesh and blood. Ludwig Feuerbach, the last representative of German classical philosophy. It was Feuerbach who was the first to turn from idealism to materialism. Marx criticized Feuerbach's limited materialism. He wrote, philosophers have explained the world in various ways, but the problem is to change it. Adam Smith one of the founders of English political economy. David Ricardo, one of its most prominent representatives. It was Marx, however, who turned political economy into a powerful theoretical weapon of the proletariat. flame of the people's wrath that fired Marx's thought. His teaching on the proletarian revolution and the dictatorship of the proletariat was born of a historical necessity to destroy violence by violence in the name of the victory of justice.
London. It was here on September 28, 1864, that the first international was founded. Marx was its organizer and inspired leader. Now you will see two photographs of the delegates to the Geneva and Basel Congresses of the International. These are representatives of the working class from many different countries. They got together in the name of the struggle for the unity and consolidation of the international proletariat. The founding of the Union of Communists was the start of the struggle for a proletarian party. The activities of the International Working Men's Association became a decisive step in that direction. The International laid the foundation for mass workers' parties and the struggle of the international proletariat for socialism. Marx and Engels were surrounded by friends and associates. Georgi Karius, Hermann Young, Wilhelm Liebknecht, August Debel, Paul Lafarge, Elizaveta Tomanovskaya Dmitrieva, and Anna Korvin Krukovskaya, members of the Russian section of the international active communards. Photographs of Paris in those heroic days. German bombs and the French bourgeois government shells scarred the streets of this revolutionary city. In its blind fury, the bourgeoisie tried to wipe the Paris Commune, the spiritual child of the international, off the face of the earth. The legendary communards, the defeated but unvanquished heroes of revolutionary Paris, the nameless but illustrious heroes of the social revolution, which for all times would liberate mankind from a class society. These words of Marx's came true in October 1917. Here they are, the great heirs of the Commune. Long before the victory of the October Revolution, Marx wrote that the revolutionary movement in Russia would inevitably lead, though not perhaps without a long and brutal struggle, to the foundation of a Russian Commune. The third communist international, Lenin's International. It was born on the crest of the Great Revolution. The third international continued the struggle for the unity of the international proletariat to which Karl Marx had devoted so much of his strength and energy during the period of the first international. Lenin did everything possible to make all that was written by Marx and Engels available to millions. Letters written by the founders of scientific communism, how rich they are in thought, how forceful and passionate. The Russian writer and revolutionary Democrat Alexander Herzen wrote, there are letters which seem to have captured the past and upon which, as it were, past events have left clots of blood. Marx at the age of 43. He had already experienced revolution, exile, poverty, the loss of four children. Marx five years later. 
In 1867, Marx wrote to one of his friends, you ask why I haven't answered you, because all this time I have been on the grave's edge. I had to make use of every moment when I was capable of working in order to complete my writing, for which I have sacrificed my health, my happiness, and my family. I have to laugh at what are called practical people and their wisdom. If one wants to be a beast, then of course one can turn one's back upon the suffering of mankind and worry only about one's own skin. volume of Das Kapital was published in 1867, for which Marx, according to Wilhelm Liebknecht, received less than is paid an ordinary laborer for a year's work. In that momentous year, Engels wrote to Marx, I always thought that confounded book that you have been nurturing for so long was the main cause of all your misfortunes. That perpetually uncompleted work depressed you physically, spiritually, and financially. And I understand very well that now, after shaking off that nightmare, you feel a completely new man. But this titanic work was not yet completed. There were 16 more years of life and work ahead. And yet the first volume of Das Kapital started out on its life's journey. In all the time that capitalists and workers exist on this earth, wrote Engels, there has never been a book of such importance for them. The supreme reward for Marx was the recognition, gratitude, and respect expressed by the workers. Das Kapital is our sword, our armor, our weapon of attack, and our defense. This photograph was taken in 1875 and according to Engels is the best. It captures Marx's Olympian calm, his joie de vivre, his confidence in victory. Engels ordered several thousand copies made and had them sent to socialists all over the world at their request. Marx's hands, how much had been written by them. Hundreds of thousands of pages, every line, every word pregnant with thought. Marx a year before his death. On March 14, 1883, Engels wrote, in spite of the fact that this evening I saw him stretched out on his bed with his face cold and still forever, I cannot imagine that that great mind has ceased enriching with its powerful thought the proletarian movement of both hemispheres. To him, we owe everything we have become. Engels made a short speech at Marx's funeral. He said in part, on the 14th of March, at a quarter to three in the afternoon, the greatest thinker of modern times ceased to think. He had been left alone for scarcely two minutes. When we came back to his room, we found him in his armchair, peacefully gone to sleep forever. Memory of Marx. How little his personal belongings can tell us, and yet how many important events they have witnessed.
This is a portrait of Marx's wife, Jenny. Jenny, every letter of your name is a thing of a wonder. Its every sound enchants the ear. These words written by Marx when he was very young express the love that was always with him throughout his whole difficult life. This locket contains a picture of Marx and a lock of his hair. Marx's daughters, Jenny and Laura. Their lives, like that of their sister Eleanor, were indissolubly linked with the history of revolutionary struggle. This is the only photograph taken of Marx and Engels together. Friedrich Engels, brilliant scientist, writer, philosopher, and fiery revolutionary. He worked together with Marx for almost 40 years. If it were not for Engels' selfless support and help, Marx would never have been able to complete Das Kapital and would almost inevitably have perished, crushed by the yoke of poverty. Lenin took up Marx's cause, Lenin's office in the Kremlin. Comrade Lenin from the Petrograd Soviet of Deputies. Moscow, 1918, the centenary of the birth of Karl Marx. Lenin at the foot of the temporary monument to Marx and Engels. In the history of mankind, this day in 1918 is only a moment, but what a very significant one. The first anniversary of the first workers and peasants state in the world, the embodiment of Marx's ideas. of Marx. The memory of Marx lives on the world over. Cities, ships, libraries, theaters, and factories have been named after Marx. What Marx taught has been realized. There could be no better monument than that to his genius. of the world, Marx's name commands respect. His works have been translated into hundreds of languages and have become a powerful weapon for millions in the struggle for a better future, in the struggle for communism. Mankind will never forget the man 
to whom it owes so much. Наша партия постоянно заботится о дальнейшей разработке революционной теории, о развитии всех составных... Secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, Mikhail Suslov, had a meeting in honor of the 150th anniversary of the birth of Marx, said... The teaching of Marxism-Leninism forms the ideological basis for the building of socialism and communism. It is also the ideological basis and banner of struggle of the international communist movement, of the struggle of the peoples for their social and national liberation. Toiling humanity will always link the name of Karl Marx with the name of Vladimir Lenin, the man who took up his cause and developed his teaching. It was Lenin who fulfilled the giant task of further developing and of implementing Marxist theory. The Communist Party has carried the great revolutionary banner of Marx and Lenin with honor over the decades. Under this banner, the working people of the Soviet Union have turned their country into one of the world's mightiest powers. The never-fading light of the ideas of Marxism-Leninism illuminates the road leading onward to communism. Today, on the day when we honor the memory of the great founder of scientific communism, we can state with confidence, in a relatively short, historically speaking, period of time, our socialist homeland will arrive at the final goal set by Marx, communism. Today, the international working class and all of progressive humanity are paying tribute to the great scholar, leader and teacher of the world proletariat, Karl Marx. Long live the immortal revolutionary teaching of Marx, Engels and Lenin. <laughs>